Hello and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. Today we are going to discuss about role of fungi in bioremediation. Okay, so bioremediation is a topic from applied microbiology and a general video on the actual concept of bioremediation, what are the types of methods or strategies which are used in bioremediation. So all these um, points are discussed in a video. Actually, there are two parts of bioremediation and all uh, the information is there uploaded and explained. So you can watch my videos of bioremediation on my channel. And this is separately for fungi, which is all the examples of fungi which are used in bioremediation. Okay. So you may find some examples are of say mushrooms. Okay. Even of mushrooms. So there are uh, different um, examples and uh, even difficult names to even pronounce okay even i have not uh, heard of some of these names of fungi okay so this is a conceptual or we can say a theoretical video on fungal bioremediation i'm not going to discuss any strategy here okay so this is for um, academic years where in uh, last year of your masters you have topic of bioremediation and where you need to uh, know the concept or role of uh, fungi in bioremediation and you have to uh, write the mechanism they use and the examples okay so let's start so fungi we know they are eukaryotic the yeast is unicellular and multicellular we have molds and mushrooms okay so you will find some examples here which are of mushrooms as well that's what i wanted to tell you then the role fungi play in the ecosystem is mainly they are known for their decomposing uh, characteristics okay so they are known as decomposers recyclers and even symbionts right so they often form mutualistic re relationship with uh, neighboring organisms to provide nutrients water minerals intentionally they can be used to bioremediate a site as well okay so cements the example is of mycorrhiza okay so where they uh, grow in a mutualistic relationship with a plant roots and uh, they help or they provide nutrients and water and minerals to the plant and in exchange they get carbohydrate okay so even cements in some cases can be used intentionally to bioremediate a site okay so that's a uh, simple point you can add in your answer as well okay so it is not necessarily that uh, a mycorrhiza cannot be used in bioremediation okay even a mycorrhiza can have some good properties which uh, or good um, enzyme mechanisms we can say which can be used for bioremediation okay then the role of fungi is even say parasitic and saprophytic so what does that mean it means that some of the uh, species or the fungal cultures they are known to live on dead matter okay for example rotting wood okay to break down so how do you do that they live on the dead matter by breaking down the uh, substrate and obtaining energy from the organic compounds right then fungi are widely studied for their various properties some are helpful while some are harmful to mankind and in nature fungi helps in even nutrient cycling degradation of organic waste they live in symbiotic association with plants for mutual benefits okay the potential of various fungi is uh, exploited by researchers uh, for various purposes and one of such purpose is biodegradation and bioremediation so we are dealing nowadays with lot of pollution right so due to human activities nature is getting polluted and we ourselves need to act on it so bioremediation is a strategy that we, we can apply okay so this is a video which i was talking about so there are two parts part one and part two on bioremediation and it is applied micro topic okay so you can find all uh, the parts that is part one and part two on my channel right so pollutants so moving towards pollutants pollutants are what they are generated due to intensive industrialization or other anthropogenic activities okay 
so these pollutants they comprise of different organic inorganic or recalcitrant chemicals xenobiotics polyaromatic hydrocarbons fertilizers agrochemicals pesticides dyes or toxic heavy metals which are dangerous to our environment even for our health and can cause contamination to soil okay so a chemical component or chemical compound or say uh, yeah a dye or even fertilizers or heavy metals which are highly toxic okay and they can harm the environment or even human health or cause contamination they are considered as pollutants okay so various adverse effects on agricultural land and soil are raising day by day those results into soil pollution right so bioremediation is the removal and degradation of harmful toxic pollutants present in environment into simpler forms okay and how that is done that is done by using microbes and that's why the term has bio as a prefix added to it okay so bio means living um, organism is used and it is used to remediate that is to remove or degrade a harmful toxic pollutant the utilization of fungi as well as their consortia is an effective cost efficient cost effective and economical strategy as compared to other conventional methods for contaminated soil remediation okay so what is consortia consortia is a very good um, say mixture of cultures where uh, selectively you pick a particular culture and you form a consortia that is a mixture of cultures which will give very good very cost effective very efficient and um, very good degradation or uh, say remediation um, results okay so that is a consortia a mixture of cultures is consortia okay so utilization of fungus single culture or as well as consortia that is mixture of fungal cultures can be effective okay so thus efforts are greatly required for bioremediation of soil pollutants and for the present scenario of excessive use of harmful chemicals okay so a general question should pop up in your mind that why to use fungi or why fungi are more potent than bacteria so the answer here is the activity of fungi is mainly due to the action of extracellular oxidoreductase enzymes which are released by the fungal mycelium into the nearby environment okay or the uh, nearby polluted site being filamentous the fungi uh, it has a plus point that it can reach to soil pollutants more efficiently as compared to bacteria and as we know fungi are good decomposers they are parasitic and are recyc recyclers this is the reasons or these are the reasons uh, why they are considered as good biodegraders and are used in bioremediation okay so they are able to degrade organic matter easily right but we can intentionally use them for bioremediation or, or to bioremediate a site which is polluted so fungi can significantly bioremediate variety of pollutants like pops textile dyes pulp and paper industry effluent then petroleum hydrocarbons uh, phs pesticides and ppcps etc okay so uh, here is a simple representative diagram or you can say a flow chart which you can remember to uh, or you can include this in your answers okay so just a uh, follow my directions here okay so say there is a petroleum contaminated soil site so directly you can use a white rot fungi so this is an example of a fungal culture which you used to remediate a petroleum contaminated soil, uh, soil site okay so you can directly go to um, remediate that site by using a white rot fungi so what will happen if you uh, if you use some other cultures then what will happen even uh, the petroleum hydrocarbon it will get in contact with the fungal hyphae okay so the fungal hyphae as we have seen here that the fungal hyphae or mycelia they uh, release some extracellular oxidoreductase enzymes into the nearby environment okay so these enzymes that is lignin peroxidase 
uh, then manganese peroxidase, versatile peroxidase, and lacases. They these are some enzymes which will uh, if can go or your uh, these are some enzymes which can follow two pathways. So first is direct enzyme oxidation and other one is indirect enzyme oxidation okay so this depends on the uh, mode of action of the enzyme so simply remember this for now and what you will have you you will get some uh, aromatic open rings uh, aromatic ring openings okay then cleavage of long chain hydrocarbons or side chains uh, some of the side chains may get uh, degraded or you may get some cleavage done by these enzymes and this will result in some other product formations okay even you can get ether peroxide formation so the mnp for example here that is manganese peroxidase this is the enzyme mediated complexes which uh, uh, mnp mediated complexes involving mn3 plus and chelated mn2 plus that is the magnesium ions okay they are chelated and this is the uh, mechanisms which can be used by some of the uh, fungal cultures and this will result in the degradation of products okay and you may get byproducts like uh, muconic acid derivatives then ro minus rco minus then co2 or you may get r plus r minus simpler hydrocarbons or other organic fragments okay some uh, functional groups other functional groups you may get so that depends on the uh, product getting degraded okay so depending on that you may get a functional group so this was about why to use fungi so now let's uh, see some examples here so i may not be able to pronounce the names properly but uh, let's see some three four examples here which are i guess important so you can uh, remember some easy easy examples if you are having problem or you are having trouble remembering these long long fungal names okay no issue so some examples are like uh, this particular phenerocyte chrysosporium uh, also known as a white rot fungi it acts to break down uh, ligneous material or organo pollutants by adding an oh group and produces aromatic mixtures okay it can also degrade uh, tri nitrotoluene ddt and pentachlorophenol okay so uh, easy to remember uh, example then diverse fungal groups such as coriolis versicolor this is uh, actually mushroom okay then hirsioporus uh, larincinus or uh, yeah other two I cannot pronounce so these can be used um, for decolorization of dye effluent then some of the marine fungi or marine fungi have been exploited by scientists which can be used for bioremediation and these are like trichoderma then penicillium aspergillus mucor okay but the point to remember here that uh, is that they are isolated from some marine uh, samples okay so they are not the uh, simple uh, cultures that we obtain by exposing a plate to air okay so not necessarily that particular fungal species will be able to by uh, remediate a pollutant okay so it also depends on the species right just don't go by the genus so their ability to adapt wins uh, we are talking here about marine fungi or marine fungi so their ability to adapt to high saline conditions and ph extremes provides a biological advantage right so they can also tolerate higher concentration of heavy metals like lead and copper okay the next is trichoderma herzianum can biotransform pentachlorophenol then penicillium aspergillus species mucus species and slime mold have potential to bioremediate water soluble crude oil okay then symbiotic fungi with uh, plants can remediate cadmium okay so mycorrhizal fungus that uh, the example here is sulus bovinus or rhizopogon rhizopogon uh, roseolus 
form symbiotic association with trees like pinus. So these are the examples of symbiotic fungi which can remediate cadmium. So other uh, compounds that can be degraded or remediated by fungi are listed here and the examples of the fungal culture are listed here. Okay, so anthracin example is uh, Armillaria species of fungi can remediate anthracin. Then for gasoline, you can use uh, exophilella xenobiotic. Then heavy metals like cadmium, zinc and lead uh, glomus, then gigaspore, these are uh, actually mycorrhizal species, okay. Then aspergillus flavus, then effluent from leather tanning, even uh, here also you will find aspergillus mainly, uh, but the species they differ. There is uh, niger flavus and jejeta, okay. Then polychlorinated by Phenol, sorry, biphenyls, that is POPs. So for that, you can use Aspergillus niger, then uh, Thermoascus crustaceus uh, or a uh, Foma species. Then uranium contaminated soils, for that, you can use fungi like uh, Crypto, sorry, Cryptococcus and Aspergillus and Curvo. Curvularia, okay, and for municipal solid waste, you can go for Armillaria gemina, then Foliota adipose, and Aspergillus niger. Okay, so these are very, very few examples. There can be many more. Okay, so I have just referred one or two research articles. You may get some other examples as well, but these are, I guess, easy to remember. So try to list at least two for a single compound. Okay. Then, yeah, we have seen this point that is lacasses, then versatile uh, peroxidase, lignin peroxidase, manganese, uh, sorry, manganese peroxidase, they can degrade products like POP and petroleum hydrocarbons by direct or indirect oxidation to produce products like simpler uh, hydrocarbons, muconic acid, derivatives, and some other functional groups. Okay or other organic fragments we can say so this was all about fungi or using fungi in bioremediation okay so this was a general theoretical conceptual video on this topic i hope you like my video and uh, do like share and subscribe to my channel even recommend my videos share my videos with your friends and thank you for watching keep supporting thank you